Hello. Hello. Um, I like so much his music. Sometimes when I start to listen to someone is praying for you, I just I cannot start. hear. It's a very nice music. <laughs> I cannot hear this music. What? I cannot hear. No. No. And you here? Did you listen to the music? Yes. Yeah, it was nice. Oh. Yeah, it must mm. be something in your sound, Maria, in your computer. Ah, uh, yeah. Maybe, yeah. But uh, I'm going to send this music for you. It's a very, very beautiful music. Someone's praying for you. Okay. Thank you. It's a, a, a group called Heritage Singers. It's a very old group in the United States of America. The songs are very nice, very nice. Um, our matter today is a, a part of a sequence that we are studying. And uh, I, I believe today is a, one of the, the most important questions about the Beast of Revelation. And uh, I would like to ask you to open your Bible with me to read Revelation 13 from verse 11 to, to 18. Okay, but before, let's pray. Uh, Hen, would you like to pray? Ask God to, the blessing for our study. Okay. Uh, dear God, thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity for today to uh, uh, send receive your blessing Amen. and to read the bible uh, and to learn more about uh, the beast and the beast system in the bible thank you very much amen amen amen, amen. <clears throat> okay you you can follow me um i read from new king james version Revelation 13, from verse 11 to 18. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had uh, two horns like a lamb, and spoke like a dragon. And he exercised all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and caused the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly one was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man. 
and he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. <coughs> Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Okay, are you sure? We have a, a, a long matter, much, much easier to present. Then we, we're going to make some considerations about this matter. Uh, with the reading of Revelation 13, 11 to 18, it is possible to draw, to draw the following conclusions. Uh, I, I would like you follow with me the reasoning. If you have some question, you may, may do. No problem. Okay? Uh, uh, be with your Bible open <clears throat> in Revelation 13 uh, to confirm what I'm talking about. Okay? Uh, identifying the seal of the beast by analogy. Uh, in verse 12, it requires worship. Okay, the beast requires worship. Uh, if necessary, we can, we can uh, read. No problem. Okay, verse 12. And he is, exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell on it or in it to worship the first beast. Okay, uh, requires worship. Uh, verse 13, works miracle. 13, he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven. Uh, the word in Greek for sign is semeion. Semeion is a word applying to miracle. Uh, seduces a work of deception. Revelation 14. So it is a, it is a sort of uh, something to deceive the people. Uh, in four, have authority to kill. That is a loss of religion and civil freedom. There is no more freedom of religion or civil, civil freedom. Uh, the mark on the hand or on the forehead. A, a, a specific sign uh, to give people freedom, but inside uh, the allowance of uh, the beast. Uh, and six, it is related to trade, buy or sell. Verse 17, let's see. Uh, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name or the beast or the number of his name. What, what it means? It means a universal boycott to forbid some class of people uh, to sell or buy or whatever. Uh, number seven, your number is a number of men. It, uh, it's a sort of uh, a man institution or an institution governed by men. Not by woman, no. 
But yeah. The activities of the arch enemy of God are operated as counteraction to divine attributes and activities. We are going to see that since the beginning of the world, that uh, the arch enemy of God is trying all ways to counterfeit God. Everything that God has, uh, the enemy of God try to have something to, to chalk to the contrary. For instance, Revelation 7, 1 to 3. What, what Revelation 7, 1 to 3? I would like to ask you or him to please, please read this passage. Revelation 7, 1 to 3. It, it's, a, it's a passage about the sign of God. After the these things, the people I saw God. four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on, on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was granted to harm the earth and, and the sea, saying, do not harm the earth, the sea or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Yeah, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's two things very interesting to note. The sign of God is applied, uh, applied in the forehead. In, in, in it's a sign of God. God has a sign to apply uh, to his servants. It's interesting to note. Um, so an important element called the sign of God in the Bible. What, what is it? Um, God's word. Uh, in Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 8, uh, we have this message. You can read him from the screen, please. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart, and you shall teach them dil diligently unto your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. Okay, what should be put as a sign on the head of God's people in the past? The word. This word. Okay, uh, we have seen this in the term 6, 6 to 8, and also 11, 18. The word of God. Once again, is this 13, verse 9. Uh, uh, please hand, read this passage. The passage in Deuteronomy 13, verse 9, as I put in the screen to facilitate our work. And it shall be as a sign in your hand and by memorial between your eyes that the law of the Lord may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand, the Lord took thee out of Egypt. Okay, <clears throat> that is the second passage that we see. The sign of, uh, sign of God is in his word. And uh, the word of God must apply it in the forehead of God's people, between the eyes. Very interesting to note that. Uh, verse 16. And this shall be as a sign in your hand and by the front between your eyes. For the Lord with a strong hand took us out of Egypt. Okay, I got. Uh, now we're gonna see um, uh, another another sign beyond the word of God. There is another sign that must be also applied as a, as a sign, an important element called also sign of God. As we seen the last time, you remember. Now the Saturday or the Sabbath. Uh, would you like to read Ezekiel verse uh, chapter twenty verse uh, twelve? <clears throat> From the screen? Yeah, from the screen. I also gave them my Sabbaths to serve as a sign among me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. Okay, now you see that it's this, the Saturday or the Sabbath is also a sign <clears throat> to be applied uh, as a sign between God and his people. Uh, verse 20, same chapter, verse 20. We can read it then, please. Sanctify my Sabbaths, for they will serve as a sign between you and me, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. Okay. 
uh, now the question, where is the seal of God? We have passed for this passage, the last time we studied about that. That is Isaiah 8, 16. Now, Maria would like to read Isaiah 8, verse 16. Uh, just open your sound and read it. It's a very little passage. You can read from the screen. Uh, open, open your ear sound. The microphone is closed. Sorry. Okay. okay, okay. Now it's open. Ah, uh, it's open. Yeah. My internet's not good. I'm Sorry. listening very well. You can you can read Isaiah 8, 16. But my internet's so long. Uh... Blind up the, this testimony of warning and sell open up instruction among my disciples. Okay, we, we, you can see that the, the sign of God it you, is in, the, in, the, is in the, the law of God. Bind up the testimony, seal the law, pay attention to the, the law for the Lord among my disciples. Okay, so uh, the sign of God is inside the law. Seal the law among my disciples. Uh, uh, you see, uh, where will the seal of God be placed? Exodus 13, verse 16. Where will the seal of God be placed? Hen, would you like to read? Uh, and it shall be for a sign upon your hand. And for frontlets between your eyes. Okay. Uh, what about the, the, the answer for this question? Where will the seal of God be placed? In the right hand on the front. And it shall be for a sign upon your hand and for frontlets between your eyes. Okay. Pay attention. Right hands and between the eyes in the front legs. Uh, and now Ezekiel 20 verse 12 says, Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. And verse 20, And hallow my Sabbath, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. Okay? Once again, where will the seal of God be placed? On the front and on the heart. Isaiah 8, 16. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And Hebrew 8, verse 10, it's written. Hebrew is in the New Testament, and this passage is a copy of uh, a passage in Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah in the Old Testament. Jeremiah lived in uh, before, uh, just before uh, the uh, or in the time of exile. He warned the people about the, the Babylonian Zion. He lived before Daniel. Uh, for this is the covenant that I make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind, pay attention into their mind, and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Where will the seal of God be placed? Okay, I know that the seal of God is in the law. It, it will be placed in the mind, in the hearts, according to Hebrew chapter 8, verse uh, verse uh, uh, 10. And now, chapter 10, verse 16, inverts the position, but saying the same thing. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, 
And in their minds, I write them. It, it's a, it's a, a very important to, to see the, the interchangeable position of uh, hearts and minds. It's a quite the same thing, but with a little different difference. We see uh, the mind is a sort of conviction. Heart is a sentiment, something that we grasp with fervor, right? So what means right hand? Right hand, the works of man. We're going to see that. I put the passage over here. And front, front is a conviction of man. So what we think about the, uh, when we think about Revelation 13, um, a matter of something put in the right hand or front, we see uh, something like that. Those who submit to the decree of the beast for mere convenience, that's just, uh, it, it's put the right hand. Uh, it, it talks about that peop those people who uh, not to, to lose uh, his employment, his business, and not to, uh, to lose money, they accept the sign of the beast in the right hand. Okay, uh, number two, those who do so by personal conviction in the front, the front, those people who defend the position of the beast, who has the convic conviction that must, must uh, uh, give support to the beast. Such so is something linked to conviction. So, uh, so we have two sort of uh, behavior before the sign of the beast, okay? Um, all right. Once again, where will the seal of God be placed? In the right hand and on the front. Okay, Revelation 13, verse 16 and 17. To all the small and the great, the rich and the poor, the free and the slave, make them a certain mark on the right hand, right hand or on the forehead. Okay? Um, what what means? Let's see. Let's let's now see what means. Uh, something put in the hand or put in the in the forehead. Let's see. Uh, do you remember this passage? Isaiah 13, 14, 15, 59, 3, 6, Ecclesiastes 9, verse 10. I, I could put uh, I'm gonna put this uh this text in the screen. You know, okay, it's in the screen which with a gesture of hands refused to accept bribes, which covers his ears not to hear about murders. Gestures of hand refused to accept a bribe. What it means, the signs in the hands. Uh, hands uh, here represent our uh, answer to the appeal of God's law. Who are them that refuse to accept bribes? Those who keep, keep the commandment of God. Those who keep the commandment, commandment of God will say, no, I, I don't accept bribes. But those who accept bribes will break down the, God's law. Okay? Uh, for your hands are contaminated with blood and your fingers are of uh, wickedness. Your lips speak lies, and your tongue utter wickedly. Perceive, your hands are contaminated with blood, assassination, killing, murder. Who practice murder? Those who transgress to break down the law of God. Because the law of God uh, says, do not steal do not kill or murder. Uh, their works are works of iniquity, a work of violence in their hands. What is iniquity? Iniquity is um, sin. Sin is the breaking of the law of God. All right? 
whatever comes to your hand to do, do it according to your strength. Because in the afterlife, where you go, there is no work, no project, no knowledge, no wisdom, whatever. I, I don't like much more uh, uh, this translation. Because that's in an afterlife. It is in the, in the grave. Okay? Uh, it, it, that is in a hymn. You can open your Bible in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes is after proverb. Ecclesiastes 9. 9, Ecclesiastes 9, verse, verse 10. Can you read Ecclesiastes 9, verse 10? Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might, for there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. Okay, grave. Not after life, but grave. Uh, I, I, I don't know why I put this translation here. That's not good. Grave. Because in the grave, there's no thinking, no activity. So whatever comes to your hand, hand to do, do it according to your strength. Okay? Do uh, with wisdom, knowledge, uh, respecting God's law, whatever, etc. Okay? The front relates to conviction. We, we, we have seen now uh, about right hand. Now we're going to see the front conviction. Okay? The right hand relates to the work. And the front re relates to convictions. All right? Now, uh, in Nehemiah's chapter 13, uh, I put in the screen, but if you prefer, you can open your Bible. Nehemiah makes uh, one of the first Sabbath law uh, so the people could respect and keep the Sabbath because, because Sabbath is required to be kept by God's law. And God's people was breaking down the fourth commandment, breaking down after the exile, after the Babylonian exile, okay? So, Han, you can read this passage, and, and uh, let's read it slowly so we can understand what Nehemiah is trying to do, uh, forbidding the working on the Sabbath to God's people in the past. In those days saw I in Judah some, some trading wine presses on the Sabbath, and bringing in sheaves and loading donkeys, and also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens, which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them about the day in which they sold provisions. Okay, we're going to see uh, trading, uh, 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 trading the wine press on the Sabbath, Bringing sheaves and loading donkeys, burdens, provisions, works uh, happening in the day that was forbidden to do, forbidden by God, the Sabbath day. Uh, uh, keep reading. There dwelt men of Tyre also there who brought fish and all manner of wares and sold on the Sabbath unto the people of Judah and in Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, what evil thing is this that you do and profane the Sabbath day? Okay, they, are, they were profane the Sabbath day because they were working on the Sabbath day. And now Myers, uh, will the next, next verse, he would uh, speak why or what they were doing. Now, Reason. Did not your fathers thus, and did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon the city? Yet you bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. Okay, why God's people 
uh, was sent to exile in Babylon. And that is easy to understand. Open your Bible, because I, I didn't put in the screen, open your Bible in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 17, verse 24. Uh, 27, Jeremiah 17, 27. Okay, Hen, you, you can you can read Re, Re, Jeremiah 17, 27. In what, what was the name? Uh, ten? Jeremiah, Jeremiah, a prophet Jeremiah, chapter 17, and verse 27. <clears throat> but if you will not heed me, heed me to hallow, hallow the Sabbath, such as not carrying a burden when entering the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle a fire in its gates, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. Okay, that's happened when the Messiah of Nazareth came into Jerusalem and threw fire against Jerusalem because the Jewish people didn't observe the Sabbath. That's why they were thrown down into the exile. Now, Nehemiah is telling them, you are repeating uh, the, the own acts that, uh, that uh, make to be captives in the land of Babylon. Don't repeat that. Don't break down the Sabbath. Okay? Did not your father thus and did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon the city? Yet you bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. What measure took Nehemiah? Let's see. You, you can read it, please, Hen. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded that the gates should be shut and charged that they should not be opened till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants said, I at the gates, that there should be, that there, that there should no burden be brought on the Sabbath day. Okay, uh, uh, read in the, in, the, uh, in the King James, because uh, I made a translation from the, uh, from the, from a Brazilian, a Brazilian translation. And uh, this passage, Jerusalem became to be dark. And that's not a good translation. Read from the King James Version, or New King James Version, or, or even New International Version to understand what the text is talking about instead of to be dark. Uh, then you shall say to them, Thus say the Lord, behold, behold, I will fill all the inhabitants no, this is not the right one. Huh? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, Nehemiah 13, 19. Thirteen nineteen. It's the beginning, the beginning of the fourth. Uh, let me see. So it was at the gates of Jerusalem as it began to be dark before the Sabbath that I commanded the dark, gates to began be to be dark. Uh, what translation are you reading from? The New King James Version. Uh, try to read from the King James Version. I believe in English it might be equal. Okay. Have you found? So it was at the gate. So uh, it was at so it was at the gates of Jerusalem as it began to be dark before the Sabbath. Okay, no problem. I I, I understand in English it began to be dark. Uh, I, I will explain this. Uh, when the, the, the gate starts to be dark, when the day is breaking down, sundown, okay, sundown, the sunset, sunset, uh, we say in Portuguese, 
pôr do sol, sunset, ok? Sundown. Uh, uh -huh. What it means, sundown? Sundown is the division of the day. Open your Bible in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. And read from the verse 5. You can read uh, him, please. And Genesis God 1, called, verse 5. The, the, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Okay, so one day he start in the evening. In the sundown. In the sundown, he start the day. From the sundown of... Uh, one day up to the sundown of another day, we have a complete day of 24 hours. So when uh, the gate starts to dark, is the time to close in Friday, okay? When the dark, when that, a projection of a shadow on the gate on Friday, then they have to stop working Close the case of Jerusalem and keep the Sabbath. Do you understand, Maria? Understand him? Yeah. And? Yeah. It's, uh, it's as well understood. Yeah. Okay. Uh, identifying the seal of God. Now let's see on the screen. The seal of God, according to what we have seen up to now, relates to moral law. It's a weekly day understands uh, or comprehend or, or embrace the interruption of work, established under divine authority, requires obedience, demands loyalty, distinguish God's people. Am I right? Have you seen that? Yes. Okay. Now, the seal of God, of God requires, pay attention to me, okay? The worship of God. If you open your Bible in Revelation 14, 6 and 7, fear God and give him glory. Fear God and worship him that made heaven, earth, being, and everything on them. Do you remember Revelation 14, 6 and 7? To, uh, to worship God. It requires to worship God. The seal of God. Okay? And Mark... Mark, it's not MC, but MK. Mark 16 enables to work miracles. If, if, you, if you grab and serve it will be cure, if you drink something mortal, you, 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 it, it won't arm you, everything will be all right. All right? John 17, 17. Preach a work of truth. Okay? The seal of God. Uh, is relating to preaching of the word of truth. God never lied. Everything related to God is truth, not lying. Four, have authority to make live. John 10, verse 10, Jesus Christ said, I, uh, I, I just came to give life. Okay, the authority to make life, to make live, to make, to make people live. Okay? Uh, five, the mark on the forehead, Revelation 14, 1. The mark of God is put on the forehead according to Revelation 14, verse 1. Six, it's related to trade. Buy, sell, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11. Hand, would you like to read, please? Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11. Let's see this passage. It's related to trade, buy and sell. Uh, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy, thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord my God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, thy, thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and the rest, and rested the seventh day. 
Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Okay, are you listen listen to me well? Yeah. I have uh, I had a little trouble with my son. Are you listen to me? Yeah. You hand. Are you listen to me? I hear you now, yeah. Okay. Okay, what you see in Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11, it is related to trade. Okay, uh, the Sabbath must be, be kept holy, not to buy or to sell. Do you see that in the commandment? Have you seen that, Maria? And you, hand, do you understand yeah. the passage? Right. Okay, yeah. uh, the seal of God requires also. Number seven, its number was given by God. That's not a aleatory number. It's something, something uh, fabricated by man. It's something that was made by God. Ezekiel 20, verse 12, God said, I gave this sign to make distinction between me and my people. That's important to remember, right? So, when you get uh, the passage of uh, Nehemiah 13 and the passage of Revelation 13, you're going to see something that looks like, okay? In Nehemiah 13, there is a decree for the closing of the trade on the Saturdays, Sabbath decree. You know? In Revelation 13, there is a decree for the closing of the trade on the sacred day of the beast, the sacred for the beast, okay? The beast decree. So we have the Sabbath decree, the beast decree. So, uh, but in Nehemiah's, in Nehemiah, I, I, I know there's a Sabbath decree, but the beast, what is the decree of what? You're gonna see that. We're gonna study to discover the Sabbath decree in Amaya, but in Revelation, decree what? Let's let keep going. The seal of God, Genesis 2, verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 and verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day. Um, uh, gaze on the verbs. God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, another verb, because in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Now, when you, when you go to Revelation 14, 1 and 12, we're going to see uh, the seal of God on his people. Let's see. Uh, Revelation 14, 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood in Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So, John the Revelator saw God's people being sealed in forehead with the seal of God. Now let's see verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus to character of God's people. God's people keeps the commandments of God and have faith of Jesus. The faith of Jesus is the faith of salvation, fidelity. <clears throat> it's the faith of a relationship with God the Father. It is a very important to note. The seal of God and the, the Sabbath Congress. <clears throat> uh, from Exodus 28 to 11, Deuteronomy 5, 12 and 14, the, uh, uh, the term is a repetition of uh, the Ten Commandments. The Son of God is related to the pause of work on the day, is sanctified, and uh, is directly linked to worship. 
also. Okay. Uh, as the sign of the beast has something to do with worship, the sign of God has something to worship. First of all, God requires worship. Ezekiel 22, 26 is a very important passage because this context is the Old Testament. This is not in the New Testament, but Old Testament. God is speaking, is speaking to uh, through the prophet Ezekiel to the leaders of his nation. The leaders of Israel should have been the chief one, the first ones uh, to keep commandments, to obey God, but they are not doing so. Okay, So Ezekiel is talking about the feeling of God respecting to the leaders of Israel. Uh, okay, uh, he's talking about the city of Jerusalem. Okay, is it her referring to Jerusalem? Her priests have violated my law. Her priests, the priests of Jerusalem, and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the common, neither have they shown difference between the unclean and the clean. Do you remember that we studied about the clean and unclean some times ago? And have hid their eyes from my Sabbath. And I am profane among them. God was profane among his own people because they did not uh, make difference between clean and unclean and hid their eyes from the Sabbath. Uh, Revelation 13, 16. Uh, hand, open your Bible, please. Read once again uh, Revelation 13, 16 to make some consideration about this text. Because there will appear over there an important, uh, an important word that I would like to commend. Haragma in Both Greek. Both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Uh, just a minute, I, I have some problem with my son. My son is not being transmitted by my, my device. I don't know why. You speak something here. Uh, again, number 16? Yeah. Speak. And he, ca he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Okay. I had a problem. You know, I have to take my, my, my son directly from the computer. Okay, uh, when you read verse 13, it's speaking about the mark, okay, the mark of the beast. The word mark is karagma, from the Greek karagma. It relates to the ancient practices among the Israelites of using tefillin. Maria and him, have you listened to about tefillin? But what is that, tefillin? Uh -huh. uh, no, I don't, I don't know what tefillin is. Uh, tefillin is the same as phylacteria. Do you know phylacteria? No. Phylacteria. Uh, I, I don't know if, if you have seen some image of uh, the Orthodox Jews. They put a little box in front of uh, his head. Have you seen that? Yeah. It is a box like a, a, a match, something. It's a little. In, in uh, this box, uh, there is inside this box a, a, a little portion of the Torah, the passage of the Torah, the passage of the Pentateuch, the Old Testament. 
you know? Yep. Because God said in the Old Testament that the, uh, his people would, would carry his commandment in forehead and in their right hand, in the heart, to teach the commandment to the children, to talk about the commandment when they are walking down the street or sitting in some place. You know, do you remember this passage? We have read this passage. Uh, okay. So uh, a teflim or a phylacteria is a little box where they put some portion of the Old Testament. Um, okay, okay. Uh, let me return to, to over there. All right. Okay. Um, do you understand now what is if, what stifling or yeah. feel like yeah, yeah, is? Yeah. It is related to the commandment of God. So the word, the word here that is karagma, uh, karagma is a, a, a is a, it's related to the ancient practices of uh, using teflin or or phylacteria. The word karagma is over here. Kaipoye Pantas, he makes everyone to smikros, to smegalos, the little ones and the great one. Kai to plusios, the rich one and the tokos and poor one. Kai to eleuteros and uh, free men. Kai to dulos and uh, slave ones. In, a, in order to Give them dosin hotos, give them karagima, a mark, epites kiros auto over his hand, the dexias over his right hand, and epitu metopion auto and over his head. So the, the mark to be put over the head is karagima. So it's something relating to the law. Okay, all right. Um, where did the Jews find the motivation for the use of teflin of lacteria? Where did, did they find? In Exodus 13, 1 to 10, 13, 6, 4 to 9, 11, 13, 21. This text is speak to be faithful to God, keeping his commandment. So the beast of revelation have also its commandment. It, uh, uh, it, uh, it's, it, it's uh, constitution is motivation, but contrary to the motivation of God. The seal of our mark of the beast, the mark of the beast. Let's see. Um, I, I took this in Portuguese and making in English to be understood. All right, the seal of mark of the beast. Let's see a a contraries, all right? Let's see the contraries. Uh, God, devil is contrary to God. God is light, devil darkness. Um, uh, and the faithful, the first faithful man that was born on earth, Abel, and the unfaithful Cain. God works uh, uh, through the truth, but devil lie, God's operate salvation, devil perdition. Um, the men of God, they, they are righteous. And uh, the man of uh, devil is the wicked. The way of God is narrow path. The way of devil is wide path. God is sweet. And devil there now. God has sheep, devil goats. The seal of God, devil has also seal. God has a day, devil has also a day. Then he, we, we are seeing a, a, a contrafaction, something contrary to the will of God. What God has devil make effort makes effort to have also something 
to the contrary. Now let's see the statements claiming authority to change the law of God. We're gonna see. Uh, this is a rectory of Santa Catarina, Northern Michigan Parish Journal of May 21, 1995 is this declaration. Perhaps the most daring thing, the most revolutionary change that the church, the Catholic church has ever made in the first century was the change from the holy days, the Sabbath to Sunday, not by some order found in scripture, but through the church's awareness of its own power. So the Catholic church admits that it had made the change from Sabbath to Sunday. Uh, I keep going. People who think scripture should be the only authority should logically become Seventh-day Adventists and keep the Sabbath sacred. That is a declaration from the Catholic Church in a rectory of Santa Catarina, North in Michigan. Another, what does the papal, papal church claim to be the seal of its authority? Cardinal Gibbons was a cardinal in Baltimore, Maryland in the uh, 19th century. It was very famous in, in his time. Cardinal Gibbons Associate, in response to a questionnaire asking, did the church change the Sabbath? He answered, of course, the Catholic church claims that the change was her act. It's an act, it's a mark of its ecclesiastical power and of its power and authority in religious matter. Letter from C. F. Thomas, October 28, 1895. Uh, another Catholic archives of November 1, 1923. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible and this transfer of Sabbath observance is, uh, is proof of uh, this fact. In the Council of Trent in the 16th century, um, the bishops of the Catholic Church, they resolve that the tradition should be above the Bible, above this holy scripture, because the Catholic Church is, is based on tradition, not on scripture. And the scripture has a second place in the, theo in the Catholic theology. And on one of uh, the chief acts of Catholic Church was to change the keeping of the Sabbath for Sunday in the past, after the decree of Constantine in the fourth century, as we have seen yesterday, in, in, in the last week. Uh, historical factors. Uh, when, you, when you get to universal history, it is easy. There is a, a, um, a scholar called uh, Franz Cumont. He is the chief authority about the study of Mitraism. Okay, I, I can find some uh, PDF of uh, his written because uh, Franz Kuhlman is a, uh, he, he studied, uh, it's a deep study about Mitraism. And, uh, he makes a, a, a series of uh, declaration and uh, his research was very, uh, uh, very profound. And he shows uh, that the Mitraism was superseded by Catholicism. For instance, uh, the clothes that the Pope uses, that uh, the priests, the Catholic priests use was a sort of, of a cloth that was used by the priest of Mitraism. Another example that we can find in the study of, uh, of uh, Franz Kuhlmann, uh, um, uh, the Vatican, before it to be a Catholic temple, was a temple of Mitra, where the Archigallo where the prophet of Mitraism uh, uh, gave his oracles. It's very interesting, very important to note that. 
and uh, even even these uh, these apparatus that the Pope use, okay, uh, like hat, it calls Mitra. And Mitra is reminiscence of the worship of Mitra. It's important to note that. And uh, the Mitraism, uh, 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 one of the chief acts of Mitraism was to worship the sun because the Mitra was a, a, a representation of the sun god. Okay? We can see linguistic heritage of the or reminiscence of uh, the sun worshiping. Now, is, let's see. Uh, language or idiom, and uh, another side we're gonna see. We're gonna see um, the, uh, the 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 um, the idiom, the language of uh, in the the uh, left side. In the right side, we're gonna see uh, the word to express Sunday. Okay, Latin dies solis. Sunday is dies solis. In Portuguese. Dia do Sol. In Greek, Helios Chimera. Days of the sun. Day of the sun. Sun day. In German, Zontag. In English, Sunday. In other lands, Dutch, Zondag. A right hand. Yep. That is the pronunciation, Zondag. Yes, Sunday. Sunday. What Sunday means? The day of the sun. Yeah, that we have the reminiscence of the Mitraism that uh, just came uh, to us through the Catholicism. Uh, now let's identify the seal of uh, of God once more. Uh, the seal of God relates to moral law. It's a weekly day. It's repeat the Sabbath. It's uh, it's uh, it's understand not understand. It's involve the interruption of work. It established under it was established under divine authority. It requires obedience, demands loyalty, distinguishes God's people. That's the seal of God. The seal of God requires us to worship God. Revelation fourteen six seven enables to work miracles. We have seen that. Uh, also, it preaches the work of truth, have authority to make live, the mark on the forehead. It's related to, to, to trade, buy and sell, because in the Sabbath we have to stop to sell to buy. Its number was given by God, Ezekiel 20, verse 12. God gave this, this symbol, this sign to his people. Okay? And then find the seal of the beast by analogy. Pay attention now. Uh, the seal of the beast also relates to moral law. Uh, it's a weekly day. It's the same. Uh, uh, we are getting the, the sign of the beast comparing to the sign of God. Uh, involves the interruption of work. Uh, we're going to see uh, anybody can buy or sell. Uh, only those who have the mark of the beast. Okay, it is in Revelation 13. Established under human authority, not God's authority, but human authority. It requires obedience also. The beast requires obedience, demands loyalty also. Distinguish the people of the beast. When you compare, we're going to see uh, the resemblance. It looks like. And it finds the seal of the beast by analogy. Once more, requires also worship. Works miracle. 13, ah, it makes the, the, the sign fire from heaven. Huh? Uh, seduce a work of deception. Have authority to kill. Only those who have the mark of the beast can, uh, is allowed to leave or on the contrary, must be killed. The mark on the hand or on the forehead also mark of the beast. The beast has a mark also. It's related to trade, buy or sell. Anybody can sell or buy um, unless has the sign of the beast. Its number is the number of men, 666, all right? It's very interesting to compare with the sign of God. 
Now, we have also in the screen the two positions, okay? Uh, the signs, the sign of God and the sign of the beast. The sign of God relates to moral law. The sign of the beast relates to moral law. Um, the sign of God this is a weekly day. The sign of the beast is a weekly day. Um, the sign of God involves the interruption of work. The sign of the beast involves the interruption of work. And uh, the sign of God established under divine authority. Established, uh, the sign of beast established under human authority. The sign of God requires obedience. The sign of the beast requires obedience. Uh, the sign of God demands loyalty. The sign of the beast demands loyalty. The sign of God distinguishes the people of God. The sign of the beast distinguishes the people of the beast. When you put together in the screen, it's easy to understand what the mark of the beast means. Okay, concluding. We're going to keep studying this the next week because this is very complex. We are going to keep studying um, uh, up to find all the reasoning to be sure about the sign of the beast the next week, okay? Okay, uh, conclusion. Uh, warning about receiving uh, the sign of the beast is the most urgent we find in the word of God, in Revelation. I don't know if you have paid attention to this passage. It is very solemn. See, Revelation 49, would you like to read a hand, please? And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man, man worships the beast and his image and receives his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same okay. shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out of, out in diluted into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Sometimes people read the Bible, but never speak about the sign of the beast. Or the warning not to receive the sign of the beast. This is solemn. This is very important to us. As men and women that are interested in salvation, we must pay attention to this because this is very important. Before Jesus coming, the impress of Mark of the Beast is going to be over everyone that, that uh, has no uh, the sign of God. Or you have the sign of God, or you have the sign of the beast. You have to choose the sign of God. This is a very important question. So we have to start again and again and to gaze and peer on this question in the Bible to, in order to try to find the truth about that. Because this is solemn. This is very important. All right? Uh, the great conflict or the great controversy in Revelation 13 and 14, when you take Henry Maria, when you take do it after that. Take a moment and compare Revelation 13 with Revelation 14. In Revelation 13, we see, in Revelation 13, we see the beast menacing all the people. Okay, you have to receive the mark of the beast. The second beast saying to the people, we have to receive the mark of the first beast. The second beast is uh, making a, um, a menace of the people and saying, you all have to receive the mark of the first beast. If you don't receive the mark of the first beast, you're gonna be put in prison and finally you'll be killed. But when we see Revelation 14 is another warning. If somebody receives the mark of the beast, this person will drink from the wrath, the, the callus, uh, from the, the, uh, the cup of the, the wrath of God and want to receive the salvation. We'll lose salvation. In Revelation 13, Revelation 14, there is a conflict between the sign of God and the sign of the beast. 
Revelation 13, 12 makes it clear that the great controversy was, revolves around worship. We'd like to read, please, Han, Revelation 13, verse 12. And he exercised all the powers, all the power of the first beast before him, and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Oh yeah, now we're gonna see. We have seen that the 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 central matter, the central issue is the worship. Worship God or worship the beast. That's the central matter. We, when you get, um, uh, we assess some sites or some books or articles, we're going to see many people talking about the sign of the beast and, uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, conjectures about many things. But if you go to the text of the Bible, you're going to see the chief matter of uh, the beast is worship. Worship God or worship the beast. That is over there. Satan is the power behind the beast. Aspire to the position of divinity. He aspires to the position of the divinity. Satan. We're going to see that in Revelation 13. Two. Please, your hand. Read Revelation 13, verse 2. In the last part of the verse, we're going to find the, the devil, the dragon behind the scene. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seat and great authority. Dragon, the dragon gave the power to the beast. The dragon is the force, is the power behind the beast. Because the dragon, Satan, hates Jesus. Uh, uh, let's see now this text. Re regarding the details about the sign of the beast and other prophecies not yet fulfilled, Ellen White warns, we're going to talk about Ellen White in the, uh, ahead. You're going to study about, about her. Ellen White warns, it is presumption to deal with assumptions and theories regarding matters that the Lord has not yet revealed. She picked, keep going. The Lord has revealed to his servant John the mysteries of the book of Revelation. And uh, it is his plan that they open themselves to the study of all. In this book are described scenes that are now in the past, now in the past, and some of eternal interest that are taking place around us Others of his prophecies will not receive their full, full fulfillment until the end of time, when the last great conflict between the power of darkness and the prince of heaven. All right? So, Revelation speaks about something that happened in the past, something that took place now, and something in the future. Um, what we're seeing is studying what happened in the past to understand what is happening now and what will happen in the future. You're gonna, we're gonna uh, reach there. My intention is to study with you, both of you, so we can understand what's gonna happen in the future. It is very, very important matter, all right? Does anyone have the mark of the beast right now, today? No one we receive the mark of the beast until religious legislation is enacted introducing the substitute Saturday. Saturday. However, it's now that we are laying the foundation of our loyalty. Anyone receives the mark of the beast because it was enacted yet. But you're gonna see, it's gonna happen someday, one day. Uh, we're going to study about that. We're going to see all the scenario, all the contests where the mark of the beast is going to be uh, imposed over the people. Okay, we are closing to that. We are uh, approximating to the, 
a day to understand all these matters, right? Okay. Have you some question about this matter of today? No, it was very uh, helpful and uh, no. clear. Thank you. Oh, uh, have you some question, Han? Uh, no, yeah, yeah. Maybe what's next, but I think we, we will learn from that next week. Uh, do you know what we are studying about in next week? No, what, 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 what will be the subject? No, I, I, I'm not to understand well what you are what they're talking about. Uh, uh, speak again. Next week, uh, what, what will be the, the, the subject of next week? Uh, okay. Uh, next week, we, I believe, the best thing to do is to return to 1844 because we have to keep um, explaining what happened in 1844 to make the linkage with our today. Okay, there's some uh, important questions that are involved in the sign of the beast that have something to do with 1844. We have to return over there, okay? And uh, to make the linkage with our time today. And when you understand what happened in 1844, it is easier to understand what's going to happen in the future. Yep. Okay? Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, I thank you once more. I, I believe I have given you the answer that you are questioning. Okay? Yep. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we are keeping uh, uh, Monday to start. What do you prefer another day? Uh, next week. Uh... Yeah, uh, uh, next week, maybe uh, uh, Tuesday would be better. Is that possible? Tuesday, okay. Okay to me, Tuesday. Tuesday. Four, five, uh, that's okay for me, yeah? Okay. Five July. Okay, Tuesday is all right. Yeah, and then the, the week after I can do Monday again. Okay, if you have some questioning to do, you can write down in our group, Okay, yeah. if you remember something, you have to go to, my, to our group and write down, oh, Pastor, I have some doubt about this matter. Would you like to explain to me? And then I'm gonna do that. Uh, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, have you seen, have you watched the video that I sent to you? I, I sent uh, a video uh, 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 last, last week. Have you seen? Yes, yeah, I, I, I have not seen it in full. But I have seen uh, fragments of it, yes? Uh, have you seen uh, Maria? No, I no? didn't see, sorry. No. Maria, uh, Maria uh, this video, you, you can, you can uh, put legend in Portuguese if you prefer to understand better. I remember, I think I, I saw something, but not that you sent it to me, I was saw before. But I I put it in Portuguese. Yeah, okay. I'm going to watch it again again for in full now. Okay, and, and you and you, have you start to, to to see the the video? Yeah, I've, I've seen some fragments of it. But okay, I, but but please, I I ask you to uh, to watch from the beginning up to the end. Yeah, okay, I will, do that. I will do that. Uh, uh, after this uh, session, I will. Uh, Take the look at the full uh, documentary. Okay. All right. Let's let's pray and, and, and thanks God. Let's pray. Yes. Yeah. Oh Heavenly Father, once more we thank you for the blessing of uh, open your Bible, open your Word, and uh, understand as we dig again and again, we're finding precious pearls in Thy Word. And uh, we thank you because you have given us uh, wisdom and cleverness. And uh, we have, have given us all the comprehension 
in order to understand the deep feelings, the, the deep, uh, the deep mysterious of uh, a miracle in our lives, to transform our lives, to change our lives, because it is not enough only to uh, to to know the things, to uh, to have the understanding of the theories, but it's more important to be transformed, to be changed by thy words. Uh, I would like to be like Jesus Christ. I would, I would like to be uh, as good as Jesus Christ, meek uh, and lovable as Jesus Christ. I ask you to give, to give this sort of love, not only to me, but to Maria and to Hen and our relatives. And I ask you in the same name, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, Hen, I received your message. I read yeah. your message in, in, a, in a private, okay? And I thank you once more. And uh, yeah, hopefully it works right now uh, uh, with the new uh, batch. But uh, yeah, I think God, God will be with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, may God bless every one of us. And yes. uh, let's be in touch. If you have some doubt, please. please. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Talk God to bless you. you. Bye. Yes, bye, bye. bye. May God bless every one of yeah. us. Bye. Bye.